Okay, let's do a couple more graphs. These say graph on your own, so if you want to pause the video and try these on your own and then hit play and, and see what you come up with, you're welcome to do that. Um, but here we go, this first one here. So I need to know two things. I need to know for every graph I do, what's the amplitude and what's the period. Amplitude is four. Period is found by taking two pi, dividing by the coefficient of x, which is pi, so the period is two, okay? Um, now, it is, and I'll say this and I'll say it a few times, it is up to you how you want to scale your axes, okay? Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just, you know, one, two, three, there's four, there's negative four. That's I need that because that's my amplitude. Now the period link should technically only be there. Like I should see the graph go up, down, down, up, all in a span from zero to two. That's going to be kind of hard to draw because it's real, real compressed and it's going to kind of get sloppy. So if you want to divide or maybe stretch the scale out a little bit, that, that's totally up to you to do that if you want to. Um, but however you want to stretch it out. You go out four tick marks and drop your period link there. Okay, so maybe you go one, two, three, four, and then that's your period length. You can label it here or down here. One, two, three, four, there's another period length. One, two, three, four, etc. Okay, so we could do it like that. If you wanted to go every other box, you know, go one, two, three, four, and put two there, you could certainly do that as well. It'd be okay, it'd be correct to do, as long as you label correctly. Um, once we are divided out, we're ready to start drawing. Uh, it's a sine graph. Signs begin at the origin. Okay, I always just kind of remember that, unless there's some horizontal shifting, and, and we can talk about that when we get there, but if there's none of that, this starts at the origin. From there, if there's no reflection, it's going to go up its amplitude, and it's going to come back to zero. It's going to go down its amplitude, back to zero. Up, back to zero, down, back to zero, up, etc. If I'm going left, it's up, back to zero, then it's going to come down, back to zero, go up. And you kind of get the idea. This pattern just keeps continuing. And once it's all point plotted out, now you're ready to sketch it in. All right, mine's looking too sharp of points. It should curve more. Something like that. Try not to make them like sharp points at the bottom. They should curve, kind of like this one, that one. Okay, next one. Uh, let's see, I need to begin with the same two things. I need to find the amplitude, and I need to find the period. The amplitude on this one is three and a half, but it will flip vertically. That's the negative. Uh, the period is two pi divided by one fourth or eight pi. Okay, so on my graph, um, if I scale it the way I want to scale it so that I can fit it nice and neat, um, I'm gonna go and just call that what it is, three and a half, negative three and a half. I'm not gonna rescale the, the y. Now you need to go out to eight pi. You know, typically uh, on the first ones we'd seen, like this was two pi. Well, we need to go out eight pi. You know, so I'm just gonna go and mark every other line. Four tick marks. I'm gonna drop my period. Okay. If you want to label them all, feel free to. This is half of eight, which is four. This is two. This is six. You can put them all there if you want. And go out four tick marks and that's your period, but on the negative side. 
Okay, it is scaled out, ready to be plotted. Um, it is cosine, so cosine starts um, off the origin. So instead of here, it would start up here at its amplitude, but it's negative, so it's going to start down. And then it's going to return to zero. And then it's going to go up its amplitude, return to zero, and down its amplitude. Same pattern on the other side. And so our points kind of look like this. And there's our graph. Okay, let's look at uh, let's look at a graph that has a vertical translation. Um, I could begin the same way. Amplitude is the number that multiplies the trig function. Period is two pi divided by the number that multiplies the x inside the trig function. Um, so then the question is like, what about this negative two? Um, the, the function, and maybe you might prefer to see it written like this. You know, if we were to see it like that, it might be more obvious what that minus two does. This negative two that is subtracted behind the function, it's a vertical translation. It moves the graph simply down two units doesn't matter that it's at the front, it's just a little more confusing at the front, but we'll st still deal with it the same way. Um, okay, let's, I'm gonna go ahead and, I'm just gonna count every other line. One, two, three, four, let's call that pi. One, two, three, four, that's pi. Again, it's pi and negative pi because I'm, when I count out four tick marks, that's my period length, okay? Um, now this graph, is going to do the same thing, up three, down three, as it kind of goes uh, showing its amplitude. But the whole thing's got to shift down two units. So what I like to do is just on my graph, I'm just going to come down two units. And either kind of visually imagine it or I draw it on the graph like that, just with like a nice kind of lightly penciled in dotted line. Um, I'm basically going to pretend now that this dotted line is the x-axis. The graph is going to go up three, down three, etc., and through that line, just like that's the x-axis. Okay, so the amplitude measuring from this line right here is all. Okay, um, it's a cosine graph. Cosine starts off, again, off the origin. I remember that kind of as my pattern of the difference between sine and cosine. So off origin, this is the origin. It's going to start at its amplitude, which is three units above that line, right there. And at the first tick mark, it's going to come back down to zero. At the next tick mark, it's going to go down its amplitude. The next one back up to zero, and at the last one, back up its amplitude. Okay, same pattern over here. Back to zero down its amplitude, up to zero, up its amplitude. Okay. Same graph, it's just slid down, is all. Slid down two units. Okay, next let's look at a graph that's got a horizontal translation. Um, whether it has it or not, I'm still going to start with my same two things. I'm going to look for the amplitude, which is 3, period, which is 2 pi divided by any number that's here, and there's only a 1 there, so it's just 2 pi. And then I'm going to go ahead and divide out my x-axis. I'm going to come out 4, take marks, fourth one, drop my period measurement. Same thing to the left. Um, now, you can fill in the gaps if you want, marking the x-axis. I'm going to go ahead and do that on this graph. I think it's going to come in handy.
to see those on here. Okay, and I'll go ahead and just leave this 3 and negative 3. Okay, well, our normal sine graph, and it's sine, so sine starts at the origin, would start right here, and then it would go up its amp, down to zero, down its amp, back to zero. This graph, however, has got this here, this horizontal translation, and if you recall from in our study in college algebra, we said that anything you um, subtract on the inside moves the graph to the right that amount. If we add it, it'd move to the left. You know, it's always opposite of its sign. So this graph needs to go to the right, pi over two units, and start there. So instead of starting right here at the origin zero, zero, it's gonna go right here to pi over two, and it's gonna start. And then from that point, as its beginning point, then we're gonna see the sign pattern. Up its amp, back to zero, down its amp, and then back to zero is actually off the graph here. So we'll just pick up the pattern to the left. And it's going to look kind of like this. I know what some of you are thinking as I draw this. You're thinking, oh my gosh, it looks like a cosine graph. And it, it certainly does. It looks like a negative cosine graph that starts off the origin down three units and then has the cosine pattern. And in fact, the sine and the cosine functions are uh, essentially the same pattern of points, only they start in different places. Uh, so very confusing, you know, if you just saw a graph, you know, if I covered this up and you just saw this, um, you know, you could make an argument Either way, this is a cosine graph or it's a sine graph that's got a horizontal translation to it. Um, so, hard to know what you're looking at unless you see function with the graph.